This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News, and we're here today with Dr. Michael Bjorn, who's head of research at the Consumer Lab, Ericsson's Consumer Lab. Michael, thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, you just released your annual Consumer Trends uh, Report. Give us the, the key takeaways. Yes, I think one of the major things that we're seeing in this year, this year is that uh, uh, internet use is becoming very inclusive. So the first trend that we talk about in this report is called the lifestyle network effect. Now that's based on consumer research that we have done in 24 countries across the world, covering the views and opinions of uh, more than a billion consumers. And what we're seeing there is that four out of five now actually experience an effect when, when they use an internet service. Uh, the more people that use that specific service, the better uh, uh, value it gives to the individual as well. So this type of a network effect, I've, I think we have been talking about in the past for uh, when we look at uh, services and telephony and SMS and so on. But the interesting thing is, is that this is now multiplying on a lifestyle level on such a broad scale. So that's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. For example, did you know in, that almost half of these people are actually uh, using multiple social networks and as many as a third are actually uh, participating in some form of what we now call the sharing economy. So that shows how important internet use is becoming on a global scale. I think the amazing thing uh, is they're actually using those social media channels all at the same time while they're watching TV. <laughs> it's uh, it's supposed uh, to be the case, yes. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what other key takeaways or what other key findings um, jump out at you this year? Yes, well, I think that was one that has sort of a massive effect on us. But uh, there are some other things that may be more sort of surprising. Uh, so, for example, we talk about the trend called virtual gets real. Now, uh, there's a lot to talk about the virtual reality technology right now with the uh, virtual reality go Googles that you put on yourself and, and so on and so forth. And, of course, we can see that there is consumer interest in these types of services. But we also realize that the more these virtual reality, these virtual technologies become integrated in everyday life activities, the more important they will be and the more impact they, they will have. So, for example, we believe this will in influence shopping very much. Uh, we asked about the idea of having a 3D selfie that you can use when you do online shopping uh, to, for example, test out uh, new shoes or, or a new hat. Uh, you know, you can put it on, on your virtual uh, avatar in a way to see if it actually fits you. Um, right. Those kinds of things are quite popular among consumers when we talk to them. And actually, there may be areas where you don't need to shop anymore at all. For example, I'm, I'm a coffee drinker. I'm Swedish. We drink a lot of coffee in Sweden. And I have this bean, bean coffee bean grinder. Unfortunately, the lid of that little uh, uh, box where all the coffee ends up, it broke off because it's, it's plastic and the hinge sort of just uh, broke off. Imagine if you could just print that little detail out again on a 3D printer and have, you, can, you don't have to go out and buy a full, whole new coffee grinder. People are quite, about half of the consumers we talk to are quite interested in having that kind of a functionality. In fact, 44% even say that they would like to print their own food and nutritional supplements. How about that? <laughs> um, well, let's, uh, what, what, do you have any more key takeaways that you could share with us? Well, we have uh, uh, many. I think one I could show you. I'm not an engineer. We are, we are social scientists in Consumer Lab, but have you seen something like this? Do you know what this is? I do not. So it's very nondescript. It's just a white little box. It's very uninteresting, actually. And it gets even more un un uninteresting if you open it up, actually. It's, it's just a boring uh, one of these sort of coin-shaped batteries inside. And that's the, due to the size. That sort of sets the size of this little device. Now, this is what they call a sense meter. A and sense. A sense. Meter. A, a sensor that can transmit data. In Got this it. case, using Bluetooth with up to eight different types of sensors. And with this little battery, it actually lasts for six years, according to, well, this device was made by a company called Sigma. Um, and we've asked about the idea of sensing homes. Mm -hmm. And 55, <clears throat> excuse me, 55 percent of the people we talked to said that they would be interested in having sensors in their walls that could help them uh, find out about construction errors, potentially cracks in their walls, uh, mold buildup in your insulation, for example, if you have allergies at home, uh, water leakages, um, uh, electricity issues, and so on. 
So we may have to really sort of rethink the way with, we talk about smart homes or connected homes from the ground up, as it were, literally speaking. If you put these inside of the walls uh, rather than on the wall, wall as this one, this has also holes for you sort of for screws there but but you could just put them in the walls and then you would have a smart a totally different type of sm uh, smart home than we talk about today what are some of the implications of these these trends you, you talked about this immersive lifestyle uh, with was integration with social media you talked about virtual reality uh, goggles and then you talked about these sensors that are built into everything what are some of the implications to Ericsson? What are some of the implications to mobile carriers? What are some of the implications to uh, enterprise uh, carriers around the world? Well, I, I think one of the implications, uh, we, we look very much then on the, on the consumer perspective of this, but uh, I would like to answer that with actually talking about one more trend here, which I think is a quite sure. important one. We call it everything gets hacked. So we asked consumers about a long range of services and devices uh, that could potentially, and ask them if they thought this would be hacked in the near future. And uh, what, what we see is the majority of consumers believe that hacking and viruses will continue to be an issue going forward. Now, this is of course uh, not a very good situation if you think about it, but there's never a cloud without a little bit of a silver lining. So in this case, what we found was that actually two out of 10 uh, they uh, say that they actually have increased trust for an organization that was hacked, but managed to resolve the issue. So one of the implications, I think, is that we're becoming, of course, increasingly dependent on the Internet. And we also need to think about then how uh, these types of uh, uh, questions are handled and actually that there is an upside if you can handle such things in a, in a good way. Of course... Uh, just to finish off that one, there may be other things that can happen around security. So we also asked consumers about, uh, about uh, another angle on this. And 43% said that they believe that within, within three years or so, we may have to always, ident always identify ourselves when we use the Internet. Interesting. Uh, we'll talk about the Consumer Lab, what you do, where you're located, and, and why you put together these reports every year. So uh, we are loca located centrally in Shista in, in Sweden, in Stockholm in Sweden. Uh, and we also have a competence center in Bangalore where we do a lot of the uh, statistics work. Uh, but then we also have representatives in all of Ericsson's 10 sales regions that work with uh, consumer lab and, and consumer research. So this means that we can actually do very, very interesting global research projects and involving uh, competences across the world when we do that. We have been doing this for 20 years, and the reason why we're doing it, this is, well, as you probably know, Ericsson is a business-to-business -business company. We don't have consumer products, uh, but actually that makes it even more important for us to understand what's happening in consumer markets across the world. So we use this internally in our different business units with, uh, with Ericsson research and for our strategy discussions and so on. But we also want to contribute to the discussion about where information and communication technology is going in the future. So we would like to talk to our customers about this, of course, but also to people like you or actually anyone who cares to go to our website can, of course, download these reports. So this is a part of the debate around the whole development, I would say, of the Internet and of communication technologies. What was the biggest surprise to you uh, if you had to pick one thing out in this year's Consumer Trend Report? Uh, well, I think uh, one uh, area that was a big surprise was we, we, we asked people about their interest in artificial intelligence services of various kinds. And uh, we saw various levels of interest in various types of services. The top ones were uh, browsing, uh, so using an AI interface to browse the internet or to get travel guides and so on. I think those functionalities are uh, more or less part of the current generation of, uh, of smartphones, as it were. But uh, what was, there were other things that were interested in, uh, uh, having a, a, an AI as a medical advisor or even as a financial advisor. Got it. On top of that, what was really surprising was when we asked them about uh, the, the current uh, generation of smartphone, smartphones as we think about them today. Actually, half of the consumers we talked to, who are currently smartphone owners, by the way, said that they believe that these types of smartphones will be a thing of the past within only five years. 
So we will see a new development with new types of devices coming, at least when you talk to consumers. And that was a bit surprising to me, for me, actually. Yeah. Well, Michael, thanks for your time today. I appreciate you joining us. and We look forward to your report next year. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too.